Good morning. Welcome to St. Dunstan's in Carmel Valley. We are glad that you're here and we hope that you will experience a spiritual service with us. And this is a special Sunday. It is Advent 1, the beginning of the Christian year. And we welcome especially our new rector, Laurel Coote, who will be the preacher today. You began in the darkness, O God, and so did we. Out of the abyss you birthed creation, giving shape, form, and meaning to what we would come to know as the earth. You blessed animals, plants, and we humans with the warmth and brightness of the sun, only to return us each evening to the darkness of the night, a sacred, still place in which we may find you, if we sit if we wait, if we linger. Meet us in the darkness, O Lord, and be our light. Help us to know and believe that in you we have nothing to fear. Even if our eyes cannot see, even when we cannot know what is to come, we can know that you are with us. Be with us in our waiting. Move over the face of my deep, my darkness, the endless, restless chaos, and create, O oh God, trouble me, comfort me, stir me up, and calm me, but do not cease to breathe your spirit into my wakening soul. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on an armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in that last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember your iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. A portion of Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself. And we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you. 
and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, my friends. After what I imagine has felt like a long time of waiting, here we are. Although I don't physically arrive at St. Dunstan's until December 1st, I am so glad to be with you today virtually. Today we begin our new season of ministry together our first Sunday, as we welcome in the church new year and we start the season of Advent. Since receiving the news in early October of the call to serve as your rector, I too have been waiting with anticipation for this day. It feels good to no longer be waiting. Still, the reality most of us in so many ways feel is that we are still waiting. We have been waiting for COVID to end and for a vaccine to come. We have been waiting for the presidential election to produce a definitive outcome so that we in our nation 
can move on. And we've been waiting for clarity and direction to help us go forward in mission and ministry. And now today, we find ourselves stepping into the season that is all about waiting. The novel Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen tells the story of two English sisters, Eleanor and Marianne. Set in the late 19, or excuse me, 1700s, it portrays the intricate life of the Dashwood sisters. It is a story of loss and love, and it is a story about waiting. Whether waiting for the inevitable arrival of their half-brother who will take ownership of the only home that they have ever known, or waiting for an invitation to a ball, or waiting for the men they most admire to write, to call upon them, or even to propose, their lives are consumed with waiting. To fill the space, they would do needlework or sorting of ribbons. They would read or play the piano forte. Theirs was not a time of television and internet, so the news had to be brought either by courier or by word of mouth or in person. And so they waited. But Eleanor and Marianne do get their happy ending. After months of turmoil and doubt about whether or not it would ever come to be, they both find the life that they had longed for, complete with love and the possibility of a bright future and a restoration of their hope. In today's gospel, we find Jesus speaking to the disciples just before he's about to be taken off and put to death. Hidden in the words that sound cryptic and harsh about a time when the moon and the sun will disappear, he tells a story using the imagery of the fig tree. He beckons the listener to take note of the branch of the tree which as it prepares to burst forth new leaves is a metaphor for the new life that is to come. He's helping them to set their sight beyond the present moment and upon a moment yet to come that they can't even begin to imagine. It is a moment that he wants them to believe in and hold out hope for. Jesus Jesus says to be patient and to be alert and to trust that all this waiting that they will do will come to fruition. That this waiting and hoping through times of struggle and change will bring them to a new place. And this place won't be the same that they left behind. In his speaking, Jesus assures us that there is a pathway that has been laid for us to follow, one that we are called to walk together. There is an urgency for us to set our eyes upon the long prize, the prize of Jesus's return. And I'm good with that. It's good to look far ahead. But I'm also cautious I'm cautious about not wanting to look too far ahead. Right now, we need to be conscious to this present moment, the right here and right now. For in it, even in times like these of pandemic, there is God's work to do. And together, we can bring our hopes and longings for our community and those we serve into being. As eager as we are to begin our new realm of ministry together, Advent bids us to slow down and to partake fully in these next four weeks as a time of waiting, watching, imagining, and preparing. Times of waiting, whether chosen or imposed upon us, often bring new things into being. Leaves emerge from trees. Cures and vaccines for disease are found. 
a babe forms in the womb and love breaks forth into the world, bringing with it joy and hope. Our human desire to move things along cannot rush such things. Lutheran professor and commentator Caroline Lewis wrote of the season, Advent anticipates Emmanuel, but not without active and engaged waiting. As tired of it is, or as tired of it as we all are, Waiting is part of the process. And how we wait is a choice. We can choose to experience waiting as something imposed upon us and out of our control, or we can choose to enter into the season of waiting by creating a sacred ritual for ourselves in which we take time daily to wait, watch, and wonder with God. Our service began today with a reflection and a blessing as we lit the Advent candles. As we continue this practice each week of Advent, I hope that you'll join in this spiritual act by lighting a candle of your own at home. We are living in unprecedented times and touchstones as simple as lighting a candle and saying a prayer can ground us and connect us to God and with one another. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare for the arrival of the Christ child, in our waiting, let us not lose hope. Soon, love will come into the world and with it, hope for what is to come. Hope for an end to the pandemic. Hope for a unified nation. Hope for a return to the rhythms and the routines of our shared lives. And always the hope of the promise of new life in Christ. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In joy at the nearest of the Christ, let us offer our prayers to God. May the power of God's holy presence clear a path through the rubble of the broken lives and hearts to make our world and each of us a new creation. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord Hear Lord, our Lord. prayer. May our gracious God always console and comfort us, nourish our deepest hungers, and guide us in ways of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in the deserts of our lives a new Jordan, a stream of blessing that bears forgiveness, fresh refreshment, and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Dunstan's and St. Andre's, for Lucinda, our bishop, and all who do ministry near or far. May the God of John the Baptist raise up holy prophets in our midst, voices to challenge us to greater integrity and truthfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God who is our comfort hear the cries of all in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the God who is our future hold those who have died in the embrace of faithful love. Together may we see new heavens and a new earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, so our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. In this time of the pandemic, when the community of faith cannot gather together, we remember the Last Supper of Jesus with his friends, and we give thanks for the gift of the Holy Eucharist that was given to us on that night, a gift that we hold all the more precious in these days when we cannot share the bread and the wine. Yet even in the absence of this sacramental sharing, the mystical union between Christ and his church and among all of us as members of Christ's body remains unbroken. And so mindful of this deep bond of the spirit, let us unite ourselves to Christ and one another as we celebrate the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to hold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us spiritually as we have come together this day. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.